and Mike for that that talk. Um, I thought that maybe I could give a different perspective because I'm well. Last year I was pretty much un well. I think I was truly unemployed um, last last Fosse. I thought, okay, I'm in this year. It's going to be different, but I'm almost almost in the in the exact same spot. I do have a part time job um, at a nonprofit retail. It's again, it's part time, so it's not um any it's not anything to write home about as far as pay um but i i can cover bare minimum living expenses so i'm i i would call call myself underemployed currently and so that's why my my talk is like you know unemployed underemployed um but i might give a different perspective and so i the t- the title of the slides at least is maps in my head based off of a song that i that i like by vila if you've ever heard of heard of her yeah um yeah uh, as far as kind of the open source disclaimer uh these slides are on um only office which is a fairly recent um open office microsoft office alternative pretty great um the i generated the assets using a stable diffusion alternative i mean that's stable diffusion is arguably open source some may disagree some may agree i don't know but um I it's I, I used Invoke AI, which is an open source um, image text image generator. Um, but uh, yeah, I could kind of get into that. So the purpose um, that's probably kind of a very dark title header. Um, <laughs> I couldn't think of a better one, but probably. But I kind of wanted this to be more of a public autopsy. So I didn't want this to be about me. About you know what was me. I, I basically wanted to describe my predicament. Um, and essentially have maybe a public forum, public discourse about, uh, you know, maybe what I'm doing wrong or what somebody else is doing wrong. And may- maybe somebody will be able to find empathy from from where I am, you know, and maybe somebody is listening or even here out in the audience where it's like, man, nobody else has, you know, been going through what I'm going through. Well, here I am to say you're not alone. You know, here, here I am with you. But uh, mainly I want this to be for other people. And that's kind of what I've was wrestling with initially with the stock. And hopefully I was able, I'm able to make this about you and provide value for you through this. So my overall background, uh, I call myself a tech creation lead. I basically haven't found a title that I felt suits me. And so I just basically did what Eric Thomas, you know, the uh, ET, the hip hop preacher, what he, what he says to do. And, And basically if it doesn't exist, make it up. And so I was like, okay, yeah, you got to make something up. And so with enough thought and consideration into a title that suits me, I think tech creation lead is, is best because I, you know, I'm, I'm a tech lead, so I can, you know, I can actually manage and kind of um, design and develop and deploy projects in the tech stack. But at the same time, I see beyond what is currently possible. And I like to see, the the more stuff that we can create, the, the more stuff that we can really innovate on and, and drive forward. Uh, I have 12 years experience overall. Um, and my tech stack is, is basically here, you know, just basic general stuff. Some people have said, oh, you're too much of a generalist. I, I get it. Uh, but I have definitely had a rocky road in tech um, that I, you know, some stuff I'm proud of, some stuff I'm not. So my initial goal, you know, in the teen years, I, w- I was a really hard teen worker. I didn't necessarily have a whole lot of friends. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to, you know, hit the ground running you know, on, um, on getting employed. I'm going to establish myself in, in some industry, get going. Um, like initially I was thinking, yeah, I'll just get some, like some scrappy job at some, um, you know, fast food place, you know, where I'm not, where I'm not, you know, where I don't feel welcome and it'll help build character and, blah, you know, um, Basic, basic teen job um, that didn't quite happen. Uh, what really, really, what happened is that my first work experience was actually at Open Source Development Labs. I'm not sure if you if you heard about that, but um, you might have heard of Canonical. They bought out. They basically bought out OSDL, and OSDL is basically where Linus Torvalds worked. Uh, like I, this was a Beaverton office. I actually got to walk into his cubicle. Um, of course, he was never there. You know. If you were if you were Linus, why would you why would you show up there? But um, it was definitely a cool experience. I got to work with some of the um, you know the the current kernel maintainers as you probably see on mailing lists like like Case Cook and, and Brian. I forget his last name, but uh, some of some of the major ones. Um, 
but and, and yeah, and so I thought, oh wow, I mean, this is great. I mean, I you know, I want to be in tech. I got this apprenticeship at OSDL. This is awesome. I am on my way. Um, unfortunately, that it didn't quite happen that way. It what began was a very nonlinear resume where I would you know get on a team. It wouldn't quite work out. I'd spend months scrambling, you know, for for anything, and then um, you know, finally finding something, and then you know, it would end, and yeah, just a very rapid cycle. Um, and I probably the last time the with this last <laughs> end of the cycle, it, um, I was let go from a bad fit around 2018. Um, the type of letting go, let's just say that I I don't know what it feels like to be laid off. Um, so it was that type of let go. Um, it was a very messy situation. Um, and I, it was definitely a learning experience that I learned from. Uh, but I found that I was actually able to hit it pretty good in, with freelancing around 2020. Um, I was working a part-time job and at retail, um, which I'm not good for because I, I, I actually do have a process and disorder. And so in retail, that is not an environment for anyone with a process and disorder, but, um, you know, it was, it was money. Um, and, uh, but, uh, I, I took off freelancing and so I was able to quit my job, um, at, in retail and I was able to really serve clients from all over the globe. And, you know, I started out like, like $10 an hour, then I was able to work up to more of an industry standard hourly rate. It's like I was, I was, you know, getting clients right and left. I actually had to say no to some clients because it's like, man, I mean, there's so many good opportunities. I thought, okay, cool. I'm, I'm actually, you know, making it pretty good. Finally, for once in my adult life. Um, unfortunately, that was very short lived, probably about 2021, 2022, the clients dried up, um, the client pool dried up. I, and I, I kept trying to, you know, get on the platforms that worked like Upwork and Guru and, um, you know, even like LinkedIn and, and mailing lists and stuff like that. And I just, it was just really hard to find clients that wanted to go, you know, more part-time for freelance. And I found too that um, because of the pandemic, people were, you know, more, more lower quality clients were coming on board. And so they were... Um, you know, offering like, oh yeah, I can, I can do it for like 20 bucks. And, um, you know, I, I, or, you know, overseas clients for in countries where the cost of living isn't as high. And so I wasn't quite able to compete with that. Um, yeah. And so I've basically been looking for a way to join a team for the past three to four years. And yeah, I did find, um, something, some, again, part-time retail, again, not, really a, the most comfortable work environment for me, but um, I was able to do that after like a year of relentless searching. Um, and so I'm definitely thankful for a job. So uh, what's working, what's not? What's working? I'm still giving the stock, right? <laughs> so um, so far I haven't found much that has worked, um, but I have a long list of stuff that has not worked currently. Um, yeah, cold applying, you know, like even, even going through the big, long process of researching the company and looking who's there and, you know, stating in your cover letter, why you want to work there and, you know, matching your resume to the, to the job description. I, not one of those has really ended in anything, um, remotely resulting in an interview or part of, part of an interview, interview stage. Um, and of course I. I do have a, a lot of different circles of networks. Like I'm on a lot of Slack channels. I'm on quite a few um, XMPP and Element channels. I'm, I was on LinkedIn, but they didn't like me and kind of locked my account. Um, I, had, I haven't yet gotten it back. I hope to someday. Um, I still don't know what I did. If anyone works for LinkedIn anywhere, I, yeah, please, I, I want to know what I did. Um, I, uh, yeah, I have taken a cue from Gary V, um, who's kind of a business guru. He's, he basically said everybody's a media company these days, and so I I've tried to reinvent myself to be more of a media company. Um, you know, even have my personal brand be more of a media brand. Um, and so I've produced uh, articles, video. I haven't done as much lately, but you may if you follow me on social media, you miss you may you may still see occasional posts like oh yeah the school Django thing um i of course freelancing you know or, oh yeah uh, open source contributions i had yeah for somebody who 
kind of got their start at OSDL and open source in high school, I have been contributing an embarrassing amount. Like if you look at my GitHub, there are like a couple green splashes and that's it. Um, I, I'm completely embarrassed by that because I, the amount of my contribution does not match my love of open source. And of course I've got nobody to blame except myself. Um, of course I've tried uh, temp agencies and recruiters. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm fully aware that if you're, if I'm talking with an agency or recruiter, the balance is not in my favor. The power balance is not in my favor because I'm not the one paying they are and, or the company is, and the company has all of the power and I basically don't have a voice. I don't, I'm not able to say, Hey, this is the value I can provide. I just basically have to kind of go with it and hope that I don't sound like an idiot and hope, <laughs> hope that I can get it. Of course, I've also tried, you know, getting my foot in the door with another company. I've found that very rarely works. Um, something that I can imagine working is if you find, you know, a mom and pop shop, uh, you know, that's selling little knickknacks and they have a, they have a website or they need a website and it's like, Hey, I, I know how to build a website. Then you're a hero to the mom and pop shop. Um, but I, I, I think I can find that's the only way that can happen. Um, in at least in this economy. And I don't know, maybe, maybe some others have had, have worked for a company where it's like, oh yeah, I mean, even though it was a really corporate environment, I was still able to do this. If, if that happened to you, awesome. I'd, I'd love to hear about it. Um, but I haven't found that to be true. So, uh, now what, um, you know, I'm, I'm still here, still without work. I'm still trying to find a way to contribute to the open source tech community. And what can I do? Really, uh, I found I need to really focus on who I am and define that. And then from that, I'm able to serve others. Um, kind of grew up uh, being taught, you know, don't, don't, don't focus on, on, you know, don't try to define yourself. Don't focus on you, focus on others. Yes, I truly believe in focusing on others. I believe in really giving and contributing, but I found I can only do that if I know who I am and operate from that. And so I need to constantly remind myself who I am, how I'm able, how I'm able to deliver value to people, especially when I encounter negativity every day, you know, and encounter people saying, oh no, this isn't you. Oh no, you're, you're not able to do that. I need to, you know, not necessarily get in a fight with them, but you know, and maybe end the call and basically remind myself, okay, no, this is who I am. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not this terrible programmer that people say I am. I'm not, you know, this you know, I'm not with this worthless garbage that everybody says I am. This is who I am. So starting from that. And I've also found I've had to keep a millionaire mindset and a morning routine of millionaires. Um, and this kind of goes back to the identity, you know, because I, if I know I'm going to encounter negativity every day, I have to fight it back in the morning as early as I can. And so, you know, starting, starting with, I start reading, I started with reading my Bible and, and praying. It might be different for you, but for me, I need that positivity in order to get, in order to combat the negativity of the day. Um, and then of course, the morning routine, you know, I, I do a workout. Um, I also have, you know, sometimes put on a motivational video for my workout. If I'm doing, um, you know, hit workout, uh, just, just to get that positivity in, in my head. And then finally, uh, what I focus on is really is resiliency and a lot of the common, um, definition for resiliency is the ability to bounce back from anything. I think that that is more important than consistency. And uh, you know, you'll, you'll see on social media, like, oh yeah, be consistent. I mean, especially in tech, you know, like, oh, be consistent. You gotta be consistent. I think all consistency breeds is is um whenever you do fail is is just feeling like a failure like oh man I'm, I'm not consistent you know i haven't i haven't been consistent as i want to be but what resiliency says is i haven't been as consistent as i want to be but i can always i can always get better tomorrow i can always wake up tomorrow and do it you know even if i haven't been consistent uh, i think that's more healthy than than consistency so um here and I have some ideas about how the community can help, you know, not, not just me, but other people. Uh, so if you're hiring, you know, obviously I'd love to talk with you <laughs> or, or if you happen to know like, oh yeah, my company's hiring. Yeah. I'd love to talk with you. I'm, I'm sure that there are others in the room that, that would love to talk to. 
Um, and so during lunches, I suppose we just have one more lunch <laughs> for the for the conference. But yeah, at lunches, um, yeah, don't be afraid to share that your company is hiring or um, you know sharing sharing the contact names with with the hiring manager. Um, yeah, I, I would. Yeah, go ahead. And you've got yep. to work. And what happens is you get into this cycle where you're like, you're doing the work, you're doing the work, you're doing the work, you're out of the work, and now you gotta sell, now you gotta sell, now you gotta sell, and you're like constantly chasing your tail. Um, if you look at like Lumio, mm -hmm. uh, which was rolled out of Inspiral, look up, look up Inspiral and look at how they do, if I can get a it, um, handbook on how to create tech co ops. Yes, that that is definitely the way to think. the The challenge there is that a lot of sales people, you know, are find it very easy to be employed because they can sell themselves. Um, so if if you do find somebody who is in sales or marketing and they are struggling, yeah, that, that I mean, it it may be that they aren't very good sales or marketers, and and that it is a very good time, yeah, to do kind of a co op. So what you need for a salesperson. Mm -hmm. Really pissed off at how messed up the company is that they're working for. On. That is a good idea. Yeah. So yeah, I guess streaming couldn't hear, but yeah, um, somebody, <laughs> somebody, somebody suggested doing a a co op if if you know you're, you're not employed or you're looking for work is to you know, basically find salespeople who are ticked off with, with the company or the way things are, and you know willing to partner with you. And I I think that is definitely a good idea for sure. Um, yeah, so I, I would also, uh, suggest to let's, well, you know, community is huge as at this open source conference, you know, there are like tracks that talk about community. And so let, let's focus on being a community, um, not just in open source, but in proprietary as well. Uh, like I, I would say if you, if, you know, maybe for an employer, um, you could talk about you if, if their employees here, this would be my suggestion, or you could go to your employer to talk about this. If you pass on a candidate, then truly pass on a candidate, you know, pass the, pass them on for another person. Like there's, I'm, I'm sure that there may be company rules like, oh yeah, we can't have this because then there would be retaliation. But yeah, I mean, if somebody is, is legit, but they're not a good fit, why not, you know, just, just pass them on to some, some other person in your network. You know, I, I do that too. Like, well, I, I actually did have the opportunity to hire a, uh, um, a, a virtual assistant when I was freelancing and I, yeah, when there were a lot of, I got, you know, several submissions for applications and there were people that, you know, I, they seemed like really great people. They just didn't seem like the right fit for what I needed. And I basically reached out to my network and I said, Hey, you know, these are great people, not a fit for what I need, but if you are looking for a, for a VA, you know, hire them. And, you know, even for, uh, even for employers, whenever somebody passes on me, like, yeah, you know, oh, uh, yeah, like even for employers, whenever somebody passes on me, I'm, I'm like, you know, even they, they still treated me with respect, you know, they, they still were, were respectful and open and, um, you know, I, I would still like to work for them in the future, but it, you know, they, they required like too much, uh, too much Ruby experience or, um, something like that. Then, Hey, I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll share them with my network. Sure. Um, and another suggestion, if you're, if your hiring system is broken, take steps to fix it. You know, there, it, in tech, I found a lot of hiring systems that are broken. Employers are just basically like, well, that's a system. Oh, well, it's like, well, yeah, but systems can change, you know, <laughs> and it, you're, it, it's your company. You can change it. You know, um, and I, I realized that not everybody has the power to, like you might be you know, in, in some large conglomerate company, but yeah, if, if you're fi not finding a very healthy hiring system, 
change it, you know? Um, and finally, not every hire has to be full time. You know, don't don't think that you have to bring on employees that are, um, you know, that have this, you know, great, you know, great employment package and insurance and you know, maybe maybe hire part time, like for just on a small project, because freelancers, they don't necessarily care about the full package. You know, they just want to they just want to help. Um, like, like for me, I, I mean, I just want help. I, if, if I could do it for free, you know, then I would, but I mean, I, I'd have to focus on you know, paying the bills. Um, and I want to end with kind of a greater future vision that I, I would like to share with you. Um, let, let's try to see if we can all envision this, not for ourselves, not necess- not just for ourselves, but for other people too. I'd like to, um, and because I, I, I'm somebody with a huge imagination. I'm a dreamer. And so I'd like to kind of share this dream with you. A world in which everyone, no matter their skill set, background, or accomplishments, is able to work at a job where they not only feel like it's them, but where they feel empowered and valuable enough to give to others out of the abundance of their heart. And so that is the end. And if you want to follow me, then that is my main site. And I have a lot of socials down at the bottom except for LinkedIn. Have you tried Polygorp? Try Polygorp. Yeah, I checked that out. They, I, I couldn't quite, uh, well, I initially liked them, but then they got a, they got into all sorts of weird stuff. I don't know, I might try them again. <laughs> yeah. What do you, what? Oh. Um, oh, so you don't want to scan it? Oh, okay. Uh, well, no judgment again. Um, but yeah, it's damn good. D a m n d a m n g o o d dot tech. And wouldn't it be nice if they fixed their their hiring systems to not publish out a million jobs that they're not actually hiring for? Mm-hmm. The same role in ten different cities, even though there's only one role. Right. Oh, it's just maddening. Yeah. <laughs> I went through at least four interviews where I went through up to three interviews and then crickets. Like they wouldn't, they didn't tell me I wasn't accepted. They didn't make a decision. I just got like one of them sent an automated email for a survey on their process. I'm like, yeah, let me fill out the survey about your interview process. They didn't tell me what happened at the end. I said, oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, I am working on a reverse job board potentially to, I mean, fix hiring. Yeah, I, I of course need to, you know, focus on my current job and also getting getting more stable and in, in in a better job. And so, I mean, it's kind of a side project for sure. But yeah, I am I am working on a solution.